today I'm gonna to be making, actually I'm not making it today, I'm making it tomorrow, but we gotta get started on it today because it has to marinate overnight. And what is that? We're gonna be making some London broil on the gas grill. So London broil, London broil is not a cut of beef. You're gonna see top round things like that called London broil. London broil is just sort of a preparation method, which honestly, I don't even know what it really is. I'm not gonna broil it. I'm gonna cook it out in the gas grill. I've smoked it before, I've direct grilled it. We're gonna do a combination of indirect and direct on the gas grill. Because one of the things about top round is it can be tough and it can dry out. So with this overnight marinade we're gonna be using, that's gonna go a long way to helping us keep it both moist and tender. So let's get started on the marinade. First ingredient we have in the bowl here is a quarter cup of red wine. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon. Pick your own favorite red wine. To this, I'm adding a tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce. A tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of minced garlic, a quarter cup of chopped onion. That's a white onion, you can use any onion you want. And a teaspoon each of salt and ground black pepper. We're gonna whisk these ingredients together gently, get it nicely incorporated. That's good, let's get the beef out here. So this is what we're working with today. This is about a two pound top round. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tenderize this a little bit. You might've heard the term jacquard, well, same thing, we're gonna use a little tenderizer that pokes holes in this. And this is mainly just to allow our marinade to get in there to help flavor the meat. I'm gonna turn it over. Same thing. I'm gonna flip this back to the other side. Now, we just put the marinade on. Rub it all around. Turn it over gently so you don't splash. <laughs> Get everybody in there. Now, if you wanted to, you could put this in a Ziploc bag in the refrigerator overnight. What I'm gonna do is just put the lid on this Pyrex dish. I'll rotate this hunk of beef three or four times over the next 16 hours because that's about how long we're gonna marinate it. It's gonna go overnight into tomorrow afternoon. And let me tell you, once we get it out on the gas grill, give it indirect and then some direct, it's gonna be terrific. So I'm gonna get this in the refrigerator and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, we are back, but it's not the next day and it's not the next next day. My original plan was to marinate this overnight, take it out, do it on the gas grill, but two things intervened, weather and a family event. The timing just didn't happen. So this has actually been marinating now for three days. Normally I wouldn't marinate something beyond this, so three days is really about the max that I would do. But let me tell you, it's now had all that time to absorb all this great flavor in here. So all I wanna do to get ready is I wanna kinda brush off the excess pieces of onion and things like that. Don't want them to burn when we do a quick sear on it later on. So we're just gonna start scraping off a little bit of this. Not every piece is gonna come off, just enough. So this is it. I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes while I heat up the gas grill. All right, the gas grill's coming up to temp. We're at about 2.30 at great level. I have the Thermapro wireless probe set up there. I'm gonna be surrounding this London broil with burners one and four on. It's gonna be resting right here. Here's the ambient temperature probe. So let's get it on. I'm gonna get my internal meat probe in here. Okay, we can see the internal meat temperature, 41. Perfect, it's been sitting out for probably about 20 minutes. The grill temp dropped, obviously, the lid's open. So let's get it closed and get this cooking. All right, so that's gonna go until 125 degrees internal, maybe 120, depending on how it looks. Then I'm going to sear it quickly. It'll finish somewhere probably around 135. But I can tell you the smell coming off of it already is amazing. Now there's gonna be no smoke with this. This is just a true indirect cook on the gas grill, similar to how I did a prime rib uh, about a month ago, and I'll put a link up here for that. So I'll see you back here when we get close to 125. All right, we are at 124 degrees internal. The grill temp, 229, holding really well with those two burners going. It's time to give this a sear. 
So let's take a look. All right, let's go ahead and get our temperature probe out. We're gonna give this some color on the sear burner. Boy, that smells good. <laughs> go ahead and give this a turn. Give this a quick check with the instant read right here. Yeah, we're at like 132, perfect. By the time this comes off, it's gonna be right where I want it. And we are ready to get this inside, let it rest for about 10 minutes, and then we'll cut in. So here is our top round London broil. Now the total cook time on this was about 35 minutes. That's including that sear at the end for a few minutes. The indirect temperature on the gas grill ranged right around 220 degrees the entire time, maybe five degrees, 10 degrees to either side. So this was really a low and fairly quick cook. But the reason I did it this way is to get that indirect cook time to help keep it tender and not dry out. I've smoked this cut before, had great results. So let's see how this turned out on the gas grill. Let's cut into it. All right, I'm just gonna go straight in the middle here. And before I even look, I'm gonna cut a slice. With this cut, thin slices really, really work well. All right, let's see how we did. Oh, nice, there we go. Good pink there. I gotta tell you, this looks great. Those three days of marinade on this have got to have had some effect and I'm really curious to see what that was, so it's time to taste. So here we go, our unplanned three-day marinated top round London broil, here we go. Ooh, the first thing I notice is just the tenderness. And that really is one of the things that can be sort of the drawback to that top round cut when you're making London broil. If you just throw it over the coals and try and cook it quickly that way, it can dry out, it can be a little tough. This marinade time, which doesn't have to be three days, 24 hours would have been plenty, plus that indirect time, I really believe that that helps in the tenderness of this and definitely in the moisture. That sear at the end, I think is really important too. You get that little extra color, little tiny bit of you know crustiness on the outside. It's just a couple minutes. You're only taking that temperature up a few degrees, but boy, it does finish it off nicely. Now I've done a video previously where I smoked a top round, you know, London broil. That turned out great. I think smoke flavor is really good on this cut of meat. There's no smoke flavor here. If you wanted some smoke flavor, you could put, you know, a few drops of liquid smoke in your marinade when you're doing it and get that. Or you could use something like a smoked salt in your rub. I gotta tell you, this on its own, just out on the grill indirect for that time, is pretty darn good. So if you see top round or London broil available and you wanna give it a little bit of extra tenderness and moisture, don't hesitate to do some indirect cooking on it, either on your gas grill or your charcoal grill. The results are amazing.